Um, uh, center's team emphasizes safety as a cornerstone of psychedelic research. Uh, yeah, yeah, be safe. Let's see. Um, 2014, John Hopkins researchers report that a small number of longtime smokers who had failed many attempts to drop the habit did so after a carefully controlled and monitored use of psilocybin, the active hallucinogenic agent in so-called magic mushrooms in the context of a cognitive behavior therapy treatment program. I remember seeing this study, and I thought this was interesting that it helped people break uh, their smoking habit, which is yeah. notoriously one of the most difficult habits to break. Yeah. And I remember things. So I bite my nails. I, I have a horrible nail biting habit. And I've been trying to break that habit my entire life. And I was like, oh, maybe this will help me. But then I remembered, oh, yeah, they did this with the help of psychologists. They didn't just start, you know, downing they, they mushrooms. Like, <laughs> on it. Yeah, I know. They didn't just like just take a few grams every day and get rid of bad habits. No, you still need the psychological help. So, uh, so you said you gained new talents, uh, Kayla, and learn more about yourself as we all did. But any habits that you find yourself uh, breaking? Uh, well, yeah, I think that uh, that's a really good question. I'm about to give you a really <laughs> sappy mom answer. Let's go. But... Let's go. Oh, you I, mentioned this. I know where you're going. Yeah, okay. like I feel like I really struggled for a lot of years with my short fuse with my kids. And like, I'm not going to sit here and shit on myself as a mom. Like I've always tell my best of them and they're wonderful kids but i didn't want to be a mom i was like always rushing my kids and always like just on them and that that's definitely where i was before i started to get into this stuff so every time i do a trip i'm just i try to think about what kind of mother i want to be and and my temper and stuff like that and a huge impact four three four years ago i was a mom that yelled every single day and now it's but and then something I put a lot of intentional work to into like you know in my day to day life as well. But I really I credit a lot of it to these experiences is that I am able to just look at my children and 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 now I can hone in and be like this is not that big of a deal to me in my head you know and get through these moments and I know it's because of the things I've faced and the work that I've done and and in real life, but then also in these trips where I've just gotten down to why am I like that? Where'd I get that from? <laughs> oh, you know, <laughs> why am I so mad at children? <laughs> They're kids, you know, uh, and, and work through those things. And now I think I am a much, I'm not a perfect mom. I'm a mediocre mom on my best day, but, um, I'm a much more patient mom. And that's ultimately my, my biggest goal in life is to be the best mom I can and just be as present as I can with them. I'm also, yeah, more present with them too. Um, so I think it's had a, a drastic <laughs> positive impact on everything about me, honestly, but yeah, yeah. It's how I mom. And it's not like, <laughs> I, I know, I, you know, these experiences are separate from my children and all that stuff, but that's, you know, who I am as a, as a working mother. And so when I go into them, I'm always trying to think about that stuff. I'm not saying I involve my children in this at all or whatever, but um, it has made me a better parent, you know, doing this in my personal time. So, yeah, I, I can, I don't have children of my own, but I can't imagine how it would uh, really make you focus on the dynamic of, you know, your, responsibility and your obligation uh to the next generation that uh you know you're responsible for and i uh, uh the only way i can kind of extrapolate any sort of uh you know a similar uh, concept is uh on a more broad scale is that i spent a long time thinking about one my own mortality I thought about it a whole lot, like, uh, and uh, more than usual, you know, and, and like you said, not in a, not in a, a, a depressing way, but just like, hey, clock's ticking, you know, like, uh, you're, you're not going to be around much longer. And so, um, and, and how, and how I treat other people and what I'm doing for other people, because I don't need to do much for myself anymore. I, I can, uh, I'm going to be fine. And the way I see it, you know, Life is brutal. Life is cruel. Life is harsh. It is demanding. And it is just, it is just a slog for, for 99% of people just to make it, you know, day to day. And in a relatively short period of time, we are all going to be dead. 
Like, right, shorter than you want to realize, we're all going to be gone. I guarantee everyone here has, like, knew someone from childhood who's dead today, multiple people who didn't make it to their 30s or 40s. And knowing that, I just think that we should strive to make life as pleasant and as comfortable and as free of pain and as enjoyable for as many people as we possibly can while we're here. And it being on this on the psilocybin really helps amplify that. And it seems so simple. Like this isn't like, you know, earth shattering advice here. Hey, yeah. make life pleasant for people on earth. Like, yeah, not, not. But something like, about it resonates differently in your brain. Yes. It's help. Yeah. Yeah. And when, when you think about how we got here, just like how human beings, like I, I mentioned how, uh, you know, comparing my life to any average person and like anatomically modern humans have existed for roughly 300,000 years and how there's nothing different about you physically than someone who was born 200,000 years. You're the exact same. But that person lived in the African savanna for 28 years before they died. You know, maybe eating a berry a couple of times in their life, you know, like, like living off grubs and roots, running from lions and shit and, you know, not wearing clothes, just walking barefoot. Just like that could have been you. <laughs> that could that, that could have been your experience. You know, uh, <clears throat> no medicine like you got sick, you died. Sorry. That's just how it was. And. And seeing like how far we've made, and we like to, we like to shit on people because we, uh, you mentioned how people are annoying, and you uh, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, I mentioned like with the superpowers you get, super vision is one you get too, and like or reading people super annoyed. <laughs> it, well, yes, because you're you you um, reading micro expressions becomes very easy on uh, society like stuff that you like you you kind of subconsciously feel like you know where you're just walking you're like this person's got a bad vibe and you're like you don't know why but you just feel there's a reason why it's because you know the way that they're standing the way that they're moving like their 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 facial expression. you're not consciously processing all that shit but subconsciously you are and you're like, okay, this person looks like they're in a bad mood. I can't tell you why, but I just kind of feel it. That's where you get, you know, vibes from. But you can actually see where you pick up vibes. A secret from me, or I can. Also yeah, yeah. And so you can see where the vibes come from, though. Like you can, and uh, when you're on the the mushrooms. And while I get a lot of great creative ideas on mushrooms, like for making TikTok videos and stuff, I can't watch TikTok on mushrooms because. A lot of times when people are making content, they're, they got to stand out. They got to find a way to, you know, catch your attention. And they're not acting in their normal capacity. They're being inauthentic. And you don't really notice it when you're just scrolling. But man, when you're on the shrooms, pick it up right away. Like that person's faking it. Yeah. Hmm? Fake. <laughs> yeah. And it, it just burns. It's, it's like, why are you being so transparently inauthentic? It just bothers me. And so, yeah, that, that kind of gets you right there. But uh, I, I agree. Um, let's see. What was the next one we got here? Uh, oh, psilocybin eases existential anxiety in people with life threatening cancer. In a small double blind study, Johns Hopkins researchers report that a substantial majority of people suffering cancer-related anxiety or depression found considerable relief for up to six months from a large dose of psilocybin, the active compound in hallucinogenic mushroom. That's interesting because yeah. I didn't know that because I'll just say this real quick. I have thought about this because uh, in my experience, I don't. it doesn't necessarily improve my mood. It just amplifies my mood. So I have thought about this that, man, if I was dying, like if I knew the lights were going to go out in a couple of months or something, I wonder if this would help or if it would just make me sadder. And I kind of focused on it would probably make me sadder, but according to that study, it I took away depression. I think it would be really up to you. I think it would be really That's up what to I you. think too. I, when I used to, so like I told you, when I first did it, I was super scared. So there was a period in my life where like, I was just like, it's not for me. Like I can't handle it. I get scared. I freak out. And I had so many people be like, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. Like you need to do it where you, you need to feel safe before you try it. Yes. You need to feel safe. Uh, you know, you need to be in a pleasant mood. You need to, like you said, put on like happy music, um, movies that you like and stuff like that. Because if you don't like set your intentions, like I said, or create a positive environment for you to, and you might still think of things that 
you know, you have to face and deal with, you might still have to deal with some of the stuff, but at least you're not adding to that potential uh, yeah. bad mix, then nine hundred. <laughs> And you're not going to have that a bad, a bad experience. But when I ask people who have, who have had bad experiences like that, like what the circumstances of their experience was, it's almost always bad. I'm like, okay, well, try it again. And yeah. Um, it is funny though, that you never know what exactly is going to set your mood in a different way. Oh yeah. No, you, there's no exact. Time. You can only do your best. You can only do your best, but you never, <laughs> yeah. especially if you're, especially if you're new to it. Cause, Oh, I meant to, Oh fuck. Ah, keep forgetting stuff here. Uh, you were mentioning seeing God and uh, things like that, or feeling like you're in the presence of God. So I got that feeling too. Well, I don't know. It wasn't that it was a, it was more of a, you feel connected to something larger than yourself, you know, just like, yeah. uh, you know, kind of like the experience you get, at a concert or at a football game or something. It's just like, you can feel the energy of all the people yeah. and uh, taking them every single day for nearly a year, get used to it. And you're like, okay, yeah. Then it, the, 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 uh, <clears throat> the allure kind of fades away after a while. It's kind of, I, and I don't know, I guess it's not this scary, but you guys remember Lord of the Rings when Frodo would put on the ring and he was in that weird like spirit world with like the, the, the demons, like the, what are they called? I forget the death eaters or uh, something. Yeah. 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 And so you kind of feel like that, like you're lost in a different reality, but then, you know, after you're on it for a while, it's, you don't, you're not scared by it anymore. And, uh, one, but some things will scare you. I remember cats, cats bats? always scare. Oh, I, yeah. I was like, where were you hanging out with bats, bro? <laughs> no, bro. Oh God. Can you imagine hanging out in a cave. That'd be well, the worst. That's funny that you say that because Scarlett, maybe she's my emotional support animal, but anytime that I am having a bad experience and this could be totally sober too. Like I could be having a panic attack in the middle of the day. She comes to me and she'll like get on my chest and help me calm down. But you get scared of Wolfie. Well, it wasn't Wolfie. It wasn't Wolfie because Wolf. I don't think we had Wolfie at the time when I first started, but uh, he's just a baby. But uh, but uh, just a baby. He's just a baby. Uh, he, he acts like it. But we, I, it was uh, our cat Tika, and I remember I was just standing there. Well, there was two things that happened. The first, I remember the first one was that uh, the world was ending. Watching uh, the day after tomorrow. And Tika is a coward. She's a scaredy. She's a literal scared. She's afraid of everything. And I just, I just had this idea of like the president just died in the day after tomorrow. And I laughed for like an hour straight at the scenario of like, what? oh no, I laughed because I was like, oh, they'll need a new president. And I was like, what if they made <laughs> Tika president? And I was like, what if they made Tika president? And Tika is like, President Tika, the world's in winter. And Tika's hiding under the desk because she's so scared. Oh. And I just started laughing at that. But then, you know, later on, like that night or maybe the next night, uh, I would I looked the two, uh, two cats, Tika and Cigarette. I would look them in the eye and scared me to death. And I remember, I will never forget what I said because I still think it whenever I said, I was like, I said, Tika is looking at me like she knows. And I was like, well, wait, like she knows what? I don't know. But that's what it looks like. The cat's like looking at the cat's eyes just scared the shit out of me. So, I mean, I, I, they don't normal life, not that I know of. But when I look in those cat's eyes and they look back at me and cats already have a weird, like supernatural vibe about them anyway. And like, you know how they're always chasing shit that's not there and yeah. staring at things that's not there. Well, there, we could really do an episode on cats. I have a lot to add. I have a lot to say about this. I'm, it would be super weird, so I won't. But, like, research cats in history. Like, everybody has been like, what's up with the cats? And I think that everybody was on to something. And you were probably right. They they know things. Or, cats are weird. You know, or maybe they're in the the recycle rotation. Like, I very often talk about Scarlett. And I say she's not a cat. Like, she is. I call her my familiar, if you know what that is kudos to you if you don't whatever <laughs> but um i don't okay well so familiar what most commonly known as like a witch's companion um like uh it's an animal that's your companion. oh oh okay uh, and it's really like a spirit energy that's there doing more than being your companion like kind of looking out over you or whatever like salem um, yeah exactly like salem yeah <laughs> so i often joke and say that you know, Scarlett's my little familiar and she's not a cat, but like, I'm so serious. She's not, I've had the same experiences. Like that's a human. <laughs> cat. I don't get it. She's so smart. Like she's so whatever. Um, so yeah, that makes total sense. But 
uh, I have a little funny animal, well, not animal thing, but the last time I did a, a big, I had a big experience. I was out in, out here in the mountains and, um, I was sitting and watching like a, like a forest line, right. Over the mountains. I was sitting in like a little Valley area. And, um, I remember, I remember it being like, okay, I know that the trees are not flashing. Like there's no, flashing, <laughs> right? and I moved on in my trip, but then I, I needed to know what I was seeing. Cause you're not, most of the time when people think I, this is, this is not official. Okay. This is coming directly out of my ass. What is about, mm -hmm. to, about to come out of my mouth. Um, I think that you can hallucinate on streams, but most of the time when I yeah. see something, I go back later and it's, it just wasn't what I thought it was. So this is one of those experiences. I, I saw the lights, there's lights just all over this tree line. And I was like, what the fuck? And I went back the next day. It was fireflies. Oh, I, I watched cool. the most beautiful, incredible. Oh, that would be cool. I'd ever seen. And I, I, my brain, I couldn't even handle, I didn't never crossed my mind that there were fireflies that night when I was, you know, having my experience. But the next night I went back and I could clearly see them, but can't even describe what it felt like the night before though. Cause I was just like, wow. <laughs> like, it would be amazing to fun. see. Yeah. That would be really fun to see. Cause yeah. Yeah, it's hard to explain, too, if you haven't done it, because I was expecting, like, you know, kaleidoscope. It's not like that. It's just yeah. that if you look at something, it just, you can kind of warp it. It's kind of cool, especially if it's on a screen. It's a lot easier to do. You yeah. can just make stuff move and everything. That actually kind of freaked me out when I started, when I figured out that I could just. Oh, have you watched a tree for, like, have you done, have you just sit, sat and watched a tree? I haven't watched a tree, no, but a, a lot tree. of other things. What? Lots of better tree is weird. I, I've watched <laughs> curtains. Uh, grass, uh, the sky, the sky is really great to, to watch on it. it. Yeah. But you can like, it, it's, it's hard to explain. Like, like your eyes are not moving, but you can make stuff around your eyes. More than you've ever seen before. Yeah. yeah. Oh, more than you've ever seen before. <laughs> Look, colors are um, more vibrant than you thought were humanly possible. And I, I remember when this happened. Now, this is one of the weird times that I'm so, this is why like, I hate admitting I'm a nerd. Everyone knows. That. I don't know why I hate admitting it, but it's just that. Yeah. And so like um, whenever I remember noticing this, like I saw it was a green, I think. And I it was the most vibrant green I had ever seen. And I was like and I was like, whoa. And then I thought, oh, I bet I know why, because when you're under the influence, your eyes dilate. And when your eyes dilate, you let in more light. And so that means I can see the light. Say what? That makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So I remember thinking that when it happened, because I was like, how is this happening? And uh, I, I, this happened, I remember one time 